lady! Welcome back to my channel, Made Between the Pages. My name is Taylor, and today we're going to be talking about the most beautiful books from 2020. Now, when we say don't judge a book by its cover, we all know that's a lie. <laughs> Pretty much all of us who are book lovers know that if a book has a beautiful cover, you're much more likely to buy it than if it doesn't. I'm actually really picky about what I finally purchase and put on my shelves. When I was younger, I would just kind of pick up books here and there, but as I've gotten older, I've become a lot more, I don't know, selective with what I want to spend my money on and display. So today, I thought that I would just go all in on that super um, shallow side of booktube and just have some fun looking at books that have tempted my wallet pretty much all year. Some of these books I did give in in purchase and uh, are at my American house. Some of these books I do have here with me in Japan, although that's very few and far between. And some of them I just couldn't bring myself to spend the money on, but I can still admire their beauty. This has absolutely nothing to do with what is inside the covers of the book. It's just taking at face value what we can see when we look at the cover. Also, this list is only 2020, so I restricted myself to last year and the books that caught my eye last year. So this doesn't include new releases for 2021 or any special editions that were released prior to 2020. It's only last year and the things that were kind of on my radar. Let's start with the books that I have on my shelf here with me in Japan uh, because there are only a few of those. The first one is Shorefall by Robert Jackson Bennett. I mean, come now. <laughs> the first one is also gorgeous, but was released in 2019, 2018, I believe, so it can't be on this list. But this cover, even if I ended up hating this book, which I didn't, I would keep it just for this. I mean, the matte black with the pop of blue. I cannot wait to see what the third book in this trilogy is going to look like because I think it's going to look stunning on the shelf with a complete collection. I think this one is pretty hard to get in um, hardback now, but I'm sure you can find it, you know, on eBay or Abe Books or somewhere. But I do think that it is out of print. The next book from my shelves is Crescent City by Sarah J Maas. Now, no matter what your feelings on Sarah J Maas are, you cannot deny that this is a stunning book. Um, I have the Waterstones edition, so it has the sprayed edges and then the spine is um, outlaid differently than the um, American version, and I do prefer this version. And also, the end papers. I mean, how? <sighs> come on. You can't deny how gorgeous that is. The back is pretty simple. I didn't show you the back of Shorefall, but it is pretty simple. You can see the spine here. But uh, the back is, is pretty simple, but the front, you know, there's no denying how gorgeous this is. Again, like Shorefall, I'm excited to see what the next installment is gonna look like because I think it's gonna be worth my money to continue getting these Waterstones editions if they're all gonna match, which, I mean, sometimes publishers decide that they don't want to do that, which I'll never understand, but um, assuming that they do release ones that match, I will be purchasing them. And the last book from my shelf is going to be uh, Kai Butsuen by uh, Jun Aida. Uh, this is something I've mentioned on my channel a couple times. It is like a kid's story picture book from the artist Jun Aida, and this is the front. It has a bunch of monsters on it and the detail is just incredible you know there's this little invisible monster you can see here and the end pages I don't know if you can see them oh you can good there's like an imprint of the monsters on the end pages as well and it just it's really a really high quality book really high quality paper it's stunning so it's very thin so it's hard to see on my shelf but I do have it uh, behind me over on this side uh, so yeah, this one's also stunning. The next section I want to cover is a publishing house that I just pretty much like everything that they put out, and that is Orbit Books. Uh, the first one that comes to mind is The Doors of Eden. Uh, that was a release in 2020 that I was just, I have been staring at. 
for so long and I haven't gone for it and bought it yet, but I do have Children of Time by the same author, also has a stunning cover, and if I like it, I may go ahead and just add to my collection of his work because all of the covers of his work are stunning. Another cover that caught my eye in 2020 from Orbit was A Blight of Black Wings, which I'll put it up on the, on the screen as well. Also, just that aesthetic is top-notch. I love those colors together, like with the pop of yellow and the darker greens and blacks and dark blues. I just, something about that aesthetic really does it for me. Um, so I'm not going to go through all of Orbit's covers because, like I said, pretty much everything they release you know, hits the nail on the head for me, but I'll just pop a bunch of them <laughs> up on the screen. Uh, some of these are 2020 releases, some are 2021, you know, just all of these covers by Orbit are amazing. Just keep doing what you do in Orbit because you're killing it. The next section I want to talk about is special editions. I am a sucker for a special edition. I love them, just take my money. Uh, but unfortunately, the special editions that I've kind of invested in, usually the shipping to get them sent to me in Japan is quite astronomical, <laughs> so I send them to my American house. So while I do have actually a pretty decent collection of special editions, I don't have them with me, which is really a shame. Uh, but one of the ones that I talked about um, was the 10th anniversary leather-bound edition of The Way of Kings. I did uh, join the backer, I was a backer for that on Kickstarter, and I was in the first round of printing. Uh, it did arrive safe and sound at my American house, but I've only seen pictures, <laughs> unfortunately, so I haven't been able to touch it myself yet. But it is absolutely stunning, and from what I've heard from people who've been able to hold it and feel it, it's worth every penny. So I am really excited to have that in my collection, even though it's not physically with me. Another special edition that caught my eye was actually the Shadow and Bone uh, special edition, the first one from the Grisha Trilogy by Lee Bardugo. Now, if you've been around my channel or you know me, I don't like that trilogy. <laughs> I like Six of Crows and I love The Language of Thorns and some of her other work, but the Grisha Trilogy is just, just a no from me. It's a no. But this special edition is so gorgeous that I almost want to buy it even though I don't like its contents at all. <laughs> um, I don't remember who it was. It might have been, I've got a thing for things over on her channel. Um, she was unboxing this and I was like, Taylor, don't, don't go get your wallet right now. You know you hate this book. You don't need it on your shelf. But it's so tempting because stunning. The next one that I still might give in and purchase is Ray Bearer, the special edition from Fairy Loot. These stenciled edges and the color scheme on the front, yes, uh, I really, really want this in my life. I haven't been able to get my hands on Ray Bearer yet because there's a pretty long wait at my library, uh, but uh, I might go for it before I read it. That's pretty rare for me. Usually I read and, and then buy, but um, I don't know. It's just stunning, and I've heard nothing but amazing things about this book, so I feel like I feel like it'd be a safe bet to just go for it, so that may be in a haul on the future of my channel. <laughs> Now this next one has a pretty price tag on it, and that's because it's from the Folio Society, and that is The Storm of Swords by George R. R. Martin. I have not read any of the Game of Thrones books, I did see the show, um, and maybe one day I'll read them, but it's not high priority, so I didn't give in to get this book, but I mean, just look at it, <laughs> how can you not? want that. I've seen a couple people do hauls where they, you know, are unboxings of this book, and there's just no denying how gorgeous it is. So, if I do read them one day and end up loving them, I mean, if Folio Society is still printing them, I may get them. Um, but they're just, you know, even if you don't read the books, they'll make your bookshelf absolutely beautiful. Um, Folio Society is hit or miss for me. I think the quality is always high, but the design doesn't always, you know, work for me. But this particular series they have going on with uh, George R. R. Martin's works is really hitting the nail on the head for my type of aesthetic. One more special edition that really caught my eye last year, I think it was last year, oh, 
I'm pretty sure it was that this special edition was released. And that is Where Dreams Descend. Uh, I think, I don't know if it was a Lumicrate or a Fairy Lute or, or one of the book boxes had a special edition of this book that was printed directly on the cover and didn't have like a, um, uh, what's it called? Dust jacket? Come on, Taylor, you read books. And I am such a sucker for that type of thing. I love when there's no dust jacket and it's just printed right on there. Uh, so as soon as I saw this, again, I was really tempted to purchase before reading it. Um, but I know that you can't get this version of the book anymore. Pretty sure the book box is sold out as well as, you know, the book itself. Uh, but I'm sure that it's floating somewhere on eBay. Um, if I do read this in the future and I love it, I would definitely be interested in picking up this particular special edition of the book. I lied, I have one more special edition here that's also from a book box, and this is the reprint of the UK edition of Spinning Silver and Uprooted from Illumicrate. Uh, I haven't read it, either of these books, <laughs> but I keep staring at this box set on Illumicrate, and I'm just so tempted to go for it because just, ah, oh, they're gorgeous together with the the sprayed edges and like the the hardbacks without the a dust jacket are also gorgeous. I've seen the end papers are beautiful. So I'm just so tempted to go for this one. I do have uprooted at my library here. So maybe if I can get that at the library, read it. If I like it, I'll purchase them. That might be a good way to go. <laughs> but I'm still extremely tempted. I know that these UK hardbacks were out of print for a really long time. And so they were you know, a pretty penny online um, on, you know, eBay or whatever for a while there. And then the Lumicrate did, a, you know, a special reprint. So um, I kind of want to get my hands on it because I am also a bit of a sucker for like limited edition stuff because I'm like, oh, no, if I don't get it now, I'm never going to get it. <laughs> so, you know, I fall prey to that, you know, pretty easily with books. So we'll see. You may see this on um, my channel in the future. This next book technically isn't a special edition, but it sure as hell looks like it. Or maybe it was a special release edition, I don't know. But that book is The Court of Miracles. Uh, both Waterstones and Goldsboro had absolutely stunning editions of this book when it first released. Um, again, I controlled myself. I did not reach into my wallet to purchase it because, I mean, I love Les Mis, so the idea of a Les Mis retelling is amazing, but I couldn't bring myself to pay the price tag for this without knowing I would like it, but it was so tempting for me because as you may have noticed in the covers that I like, I love gold foiling, I love like, yeah, gold foil, anything with gold on it, and I love when there's a deep color contrast, so dark, you know, blues or dark greens contrasted with a gold or a yellow. I just really love that aesthetic. And these books have everything. They have the slipcase, they have the naked cover printed. Uh, it's just, ah, it's everything that I love. So I don't know if this is a special edition. Uh, maybe it was a special release edition, um, but I haven't seen a cover of this book that isn't beautiful. So um, hopefully, you know, in the future, if I decide to go for it, I can get my hands on one of these editions. It might be, you know, quite pricey at this point. I don't know. But yeah, I was so, so, so tempted. Kind of sticking ones that I don't think are special editions but look like them would be The Lives of Saints, or of the Saints, I'm not sure, by um, Lee Bardugo. Uh, again, don't like the Grisha trilogy, so I'm not that interested in this book. But as a companion novel, as it goes, it is amazingly beautifully crafted. Um, I mean, I love her language of thorns, you know, kind of offshoot of the Grisha trilogy, so Maybe I'll end up liking all of the side works of that more than the original three books, who knows? Um, so I am, I'm not completely saying I'm not gonna buy this, but um, I'm very tempted by the way that it looks. I've seen gorgeous end pages and the full color illustrations that accompany the stories in there. Just looks top notch. This next one is actually a new release from a classics collection that I'm slowly working my way through and purchasing, um, and that is Madame Bovary. Uh, it was released as part of the Chiltern Classics collection, and I also love florals. Um, I'm a big 
plant fan. Um, and I know you can't see too many florals, you know, in on my YouTube channel, but I do have a lot of them. Um, my, you know, tattoos, I have tons of, of florals. So this particular collection is really up my alley. So I'm kind of working my way through and, and slowly purchasing them. But they released a new one with the color scheme that is just chef's kiss uh, with Madame Bovary. Oh, also uh, the Dorian Gray release. Oh, that might not have been 2020. That might be this year, 2021. But this um, color scheme is also gorgeous. So one day I'd like to have this full collection on my bookshelf. Another one that I haven't purchased yet, but very well may in the future, is To Sleep in a Sea of Stars. Uh, I want to get more into sci-fi, and with covers like this, it's not going to be hard. Now, I know this is massive, and it's very sci-fi heavy, so I'm not sure that I'm ready for this book yet, which is why I haven't purchased it. But seeing it on people's shelves, I'm always like, oh, I see it. I see it in the back there, because it just, it really sticks out. Again, that aesthetic that I like, you know, the, the dark contrasted with like a pop of color. I'm just a sucker for it. Just a few more left. This next one is going to be Hollow Pox by Jessica Townsend, the third book uh, in The Trials of Morgan Crow. I read Nevermore and I have the paperback edition here um, and I do love the contents of that book but the covers haven't really done it for me that much until I saw the naked cover for Hollow Pox. The dust jacket isn't my style at all, but when you take that off and you look at that naked hardback, whoo, man, I would just throw away the dust jacket <laughs> to have that naked hardback on my shelf. It is amazing. And if they do have the other hardcover editions that have the same kind of naked hardback look, I will be willing to go, you know, back and purchase all of them in the hardback edition because I do love this series and I would be so proud to display them on my shelves looking like that. Now something you may have noticed for all of these covers that I've mentioned is that I don't particularly like people on my covers. Uh, some of the Orbit books, you know, ha do have people on them, but they're silhouettes or they're more illustrated versions of people that are kind of not not super clear, they're not right in the front there. Um, or if it's like a small person contrasted with like a landscape. If you have mountains, you've got me. Mountains pull me in right away on the front of a book. But um, actually that reminds me of another book, Havenfall, that I think came out in 2020. Haven't read it, no idea, but every time I see the cover I'm like, mountains, blues, dark blues, pops of yellows and golds, I need you, you know? So that formula will get me every time. Um, but there were a very few exceptions of like people front and, you know, forward book covers that I, I do think are gorgeous. And the two that came to mind from 2020 would be The Gilded Ones and um, I think it was Forest of Souls. Both of these books, I, again, probably The Gilded Ones is the pop of golds and you know the color scheme here is just chef's kiss beautiful. And then I guess it's the same thing, yeah, with Forest of Souls. The eyes, you know, glowing in the dark. Again, the, the contrast. So I think that that plus the person on the cover was a really nice mix for me. But typically I don't, those aren't my favorite covers. I don't really gravitate towards them. Uh, but these two were definitely the exceptions. Obviously, there are thousands and thousands of books that are published every year, more than that, I'm sure, all over the world. So a lot of these were, you know, published in America or in um, Europe. So I'm sure that there are some gorgeous books that are outside of my range, you know, that I haven't seen or weren't on my radar last year. But, uh, you know, if you have some suggestions down below of just some eye candy, some book eye candy, go ahead and, and leave them down below. Uh, let me know in the comments down below as well if you agree with my aesthetic, if the same kind of stuff pulls you in, or are you the opposite? Do you really like a person front and center on your cover? Or, you know, do you like more bright, less earthy colors? I'd love to hear about the way you aesthetically curate your collection. Or if you don't at all, maybe you don't care. Let me know. But for now, I'm gonna head out. Jenny!